Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Just look out at those fields, darling. Oh, isn't it a wonderful evening? Mm-hmm. It's one in a million. Mm. Hand me a piece of that candy. Oh. Thank you. You're right. Pretty well, it's good. not bad being alone, is it? Nope, not bad at all. Can you believe we're by ourselves in this house with the baby upstairs sound asleep? <laughs> Knock wood. Hey, move over and make room for me. Why is it that you like this chair best? Oh, is it the chair? I thought it was you. <laughs> Go on, move over. Don't be so greedy. Uh, greedy, she calls me. All I want is a fair share of the chair. Oh, you're so beautifully upholstered. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hard as nails. Nice when Mom is here, too, of course. Very nice, darling. I like having her with us. I don't know what I'd do without Mama. But just for an evening... Mm-hmm. It's perfect. And Mama knows it, too. Mm. Mama knows it best of all. That's why she went into town for tonight. Mama went in town because Aunt Louisa was sick. Mama was probably delighted to have an excuse to get some peace and quiet. I hope she doesn't feel in the way here. I think you're the one who's in the way. As a matter of fact, you're smothering me. Oh, what's a little smother between friends? Uh. Well, she's coming back tomorrow. Look, darling, just let Mama go when she wants to go and where she wants to. And she'll never feel in the way. Too bad she didn't have somebody like you all her life. The last thing that Mama wants is your pity. I don't pity, I just worry. Yes, and uselessly. Just remember, it it would have been worse for somebody of less caliber than Mama. Mm, that's true. Oh, I don't want to do anything ever but sit in this chair with you. Well, you're going to be pretty uncomfortable when I start reading my book. Do you have to do that? Mm Mm-hmm. Any objections? Yes. You always have to be doing something. Just when I'm comfortable. Can't we just talk? Oh, we'll talk. Reading a book isn't going to stop you. Well, if I have to get out of this chair, I will. Oh, all right. I'm licked. You're licked. (laughs) Mm -hmm. There. Put your arm around my neck. Oh, that's lovely. You'll be more comfortable that way. There. How's that? Bliss. Yeah, I hope Fritz and Bertha are enjoying themselves downtown. Mm Mm-hmm. They say where they were going, specially? No, I I told them to hop in the car and get acquainted with Eastbrook. Well, I am going to hop in the car and start driving around any day now. Mm -mm, mm -mm. My careless hours, free from worry, are about to finish. Your confidence in me is so reassuring. No, nothing at all. No, I bet if I weren't married to you, you'd think I was good. But you are married to me, so that's that. Now, get your hand from out inside my collar. But I love the back of your neck. You know, it was the first thing I noticed about you. I married you for the back of your neck. (laughs) Well, it's it's nice to finally know the reason for things. When I think of you... I think of the back of your neck. Uh-oh. Oh. Did you hear the door close? Yes, I think I did. Don't answer it. I'd love not to. It was probably only a rabbit coming in for a carrot or, or something. Or a frog for a bowl of milk. Mm. Hey, where are you going? To give the frog his bowl of milk. Come back here. I have no place to put my arm. Oh, hold it in the air for a minute. I just want to look out and see who it is. Well, don't stand up so straight or they'll see you. Well... Well, who is it? It is either a very small man or a little boy. Make up your mind. Must be a little boy because he has freckles. Oh. oh I know. It's the youngster we met fishing with the branch string and the worm. Which one? Oh, oh, I, re- I remember. I, 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 I lent him my best rod. And he caught the best trout. Yes, he did. Yeah, I wonder what he's doing here at this hour of the night. He's probably looking for more trout. Oh, it was so nice being all alone. Uh, he, uh, he isn't tall enough to see over the edge of the window. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? I am. Have you no conscience? None whatsoever. Oh, David, but he's come all the way over here to see us. Yeah. 
He does look sort of lost, standing there in the dark. I says, there's something lost about all children who don't have a father like you, I says. Or who just don't have a father. Oh, I forgot his father died. Well, that settles it. We'll let him in. Weakling. Oh, hush up. You're no better. Hello, man. Well, hello. So it's you. Yeah, it's me. Hi. I was starting to think you were out. We were, but we changed our minds. Well, it was good to see you again. Yeah, it sure is good. I, uh, I hope you don't mind my coming around at this hour. Oh, no, not at all, not at all. We were just, uh, this minute wondering when you're going to come around to see us, weren't we, Claudia? Yeah, mm-hmm. Well, I thought tonight would be a good time. I didn't have anything else important to do. Have you been fishing again? Uh, come on in, don't stand out there. Oh, sure I have. But I never caught a fish as big as the one we caught that day. Not we, you caught it all by yourself. Well, not exactly. But it certainly was a big fish. Uh, come in here and sit down. Well, I'm not interrupting anything. I mean, you weren't busy or something. Oh. No, My no. My mother no. said that older people are busy and you mustn't interrupt them. No, we weren't busy at all. Maybe we're not that much older. Well, you look, you look fine. Have yourself a nice tan. Yeah, school's been out. So have you. <laughs> well, I've been around. You've uh, been having a nice vacation? It's been all right. What have you been doing? Oh, I haven't been doing much. Helping Mom out most of the time. Your schoolmates have been vacationing. Must be a little lonesome. Oh, it's always sort of dead in the summer. But, well, I guess that's just the way it is. I suppose it's lonesome for your mother, too. Yeah, it is, kind of. That's why I have to stay around the house. You see... I'm the man in the family, and every lady needs a man, my mother says. How right your mother is. Uh, you've been away. I've come around, but you were out. Yes, we've uh, we've been in town for a few weeks. My mother says you got a son now. That's why we were away. <laughs> she says she heard he's a fine big boy. <laughs> well, we decided to keep him. He's all right, except he eats too much and outgrowing his clothes already. He is? Mm. Oh, I thought I'd come over and say hello to him. Well, that's very nice. Hey, you'll be his first guest. Oh, I... Hope he won't mind me dropping in like this without being invited. No, he won't mind. He's upstairs. Don't you want to come up and see him? Oh, I sure do. Uh, but please wait a sec. I got something for him outside the door. Present? Oh, it ain't much, but maybe you'll like it. This is one baby present that really means something. <laughs> I bet it will. Okay, let's go up. Why, it's a wooden wagon. Upon my word. Isn't that wonderful, David? It's red wheels, a very handsome wagon. I made it. It's not so awful good, but it rolls. The next one I make will be better. Bobby's going to love it. You'll see. Bobby is his name? Yeah. Mm, Claudia wanted to call him Ebenezer, but I wouldn't let her. Now, here. Where will I put the light on? There we are. Is this his room? All his. It's... It's kind of sissy, ain't it? Well, just for the present. He doesn't notice it much. I, um... I think it's kind of sissy, too, but uh, you know how women are. Yeah, I know. Well, where is he? Shh. I'll just pull the blankets back. There he is. Asleep. Is that him? That's all there is, so far. He's so small. Well, he's really pretty big for his age. He's... He's nothing but a baby. Lucky for me. My mother said you had a son. He is, but he... He'll uh, grow up. As a matter of fact, he'll grow up to be just like you. He'll grow up to be like me? Mm-hmm. He's so small. Well, you were small like that, too. Well, I don't remember. <laughs> Neither will he. But I thought you had a son. I came over to ask him if he'd play with me. Gee, Willikers, why... My wagon's bigger than he is. I'm sorry, but we'll... We couldn't help it. It's really better this way, to start off with. He looked awfully small to me for a while, too. As a matter of fact, he still does. I don't see how you can call him anything. We're optimistic. Well, then, I guess I might as well go along. guess I'll have to just look for somebody else to play with. Anyway, I guess I like to be alone best of all. Uh, look, Bobby's too small for you. Hmm... It's not so good to play alone, though, is it? No, not so good. Uh, come on downstairs, fella. You coming, darling? Yes, I'm coming. Does he sleep all the time? Most of the time, thank goodness. Except when he's eating. 
That's an awful way to be. Sleeping is the worst part of being awake. I think so, too. But you know, it's very important to growing boys. Like Bobby. That's what my ma says. She says I gotta get my sleep. But heck, it's an awful waste. Sure is. What are you doing, David? Well, I... I thought we could sit down here and have a game of checkers together. Me? Well, you were invited to watch. You mean you and me? Sure thing. You play checkers, don't you? Oh, sure. Sure, I'm a humdinger at checkers. Well, I haven't played them in a long time, so you'll probably beat the pants off of me. Are you sure... Are you sure you want to play checkers with me? You bet I do. My wife is terrible. Terrible at checkers. I never get a decent game anymore. I just can't seem to remember which color I am. So I'm glad you came around tonight because I was sitting here saying to myself I'd like a good, tough game of checkers, but Claudia isn't up to it. You have to be pretty bright for checkers. Watch what you say, David. Yes, you have to be pretty bright for checkers. That is the end. Now, don't you think you ought to call up your mother and tell her you'll be out a while? Oh, I guess so. I guess I ought to. The phone's over there under the passageway. Well, there goes our private evening together, darling. Yep. There it went. I I couldn't very well ask him to leave, could I? Couldn't you? I know we'd planned on just sitting around alone together, and that's all I wanted, but... But, but, but... But, gosh, he was, he was so disappointed that Bobby was only a baby, and... <laughs> well, I'll... I let him beat me quickly, and then... Let him beat you. Mm -hmm. I bet he does beat you. Darling. Darling, look at me. Yes? This, uh, this isn't the way I wanted to spend our evening. I... I hope you're not too disappointed. I would have been if you hadn't. You were born to be a father, darling. There's no getting away from it. Did I ever tell you that I like the stuff you're made of? Well, it's always nice to hear... Oh, David, for a little boy to be lonesome, that's a very special and terrible feeling, isn't it? Yes, I, I think so. Please, God, our son will never be lonesome. When the heat of the day adds to the burden of housework, why don't you give yourself a recess and reach into the refrigerator for an ice-cold bottle of Coca-Cola? The friendly pause for Coke is becoming more and more popular with folks who work, no matter whether it's in offices, factories, stores, or right at home. You'll see why once you work refreshed. Mr. King, how'd you like a game of checkers? Well, first I'd like to know how you came out with Mr. Norton. Oh, I came out okay. He took me one game, I took three. Mm, that's pretty good uh, for you. Uh, but I promised him a return match for next week sometime. I bet he does nothing between now and then but practice up for you. Oh, are you going to play with me? Mm, I might, but uh, you're too good for me, I think. Say, son, do you have any livestock on your place? Oh, just a couple of chickens. No cow or a pig? I sure would like to have one, especially a pig. But Mom says they're too much trouble. Jared Tucker's going to have some of that trouble tomorrow with his prize pig. Well, he better get hold of a vet. Not if he can. If not, uh, well, we'll see who helps him tomorrow. Good night, son. So long, Mr. King. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. These broadcasts are adapted for radio by Manya Starr, and the entire production is supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.